Folks, let me tell you about a little movie studio known as Hammer Film Productions. Hammer was a British movie company that's best known today for its gothic horror movies featuring classic horror icons like Dracula and Frankenstein, and also for increasing the amount of sex and gore that horror movies could show. But Hammer didn't just make horror films, they also made sci-fi and fantasy movies as well. And one of the weirdest movies that Hammer ever produced is a little movie called The Lost Continent. No, no, not Lost Continent. The Lost Continent. No, no, not Atlantis, The Lost Continent. The Lost Continent. This is a movie that features some serious cult film credentials. Big rubber monsters, a nonsensical plotline, and some truly killer weed. So let's dig in, shall we? So the movie begins the way any sci-fi adventure should, with a lounge song. Yeah, because nothing says groovy quite like ships covered in seaweed, am I right? This forgotten soul that the storm has sent to the lost continent. So after the Burt Bacharach on Acid song is over, we then cut to a steamship in the middle of nowhere filled with a bunch of weird characters who are apparently in the middle of burying someone at sea. Who are these people? How did they get there? What happened to us? How did we all get here? Yes, exactly. Thank you, movie. Well, it turns out this is actually the end of the movie, and the rest of it is a flashback. Some customs officers are trying to stop Captain British Roy Scheider here from leaving Freetown, Sierra Leone. But the captain decides to ignore them and leaves anyway. She's not gonna stop. So, then catch her at the other end, no? I'm glad I'm not on board with that cargo. Turn back! Alright, back to the matte painting. We then spend the next several minutes of the movie getting introduced to the various passengers on board, which includes such fascinating characters as these people. Welcome aboard, Miss, uh, Peters. Harry Tyler, at your service. I love your purse. Yes, it's, uh, rather nice, isn't it? <laughs> Only trouble is it shrinks. You like it? I had it made just so I could make that joke. <laughs> Could you afford a champagne cocktail? You know, that Peters chick has a pretty deep, masculine voice. She actually reminds me of somebody, but who? You do have problems. No, there's always the insurance. Oh yeah, that guy is totally straight. I saw a whole thing about him on the VH1. Actually, I could do with a little super gloss and luxury at the moment. <laughs> Miss Peters is used to luxury and can well afford it. She was once. Famous in my country. Oh yeah, where's that? Creepistan? Was that your daughter who just left? Unity is a delicate child. The motion of the boat is inclined to upset her. She needs to find her sea legs, you might say. As it turns out, Unity is doing something else with her sea legs and is sleeping with the ship's radio operator. Now this is important because later... Yeah, it's not important. Anyway, the crew finds some yellow containers that they didn't know were aboard. When they ask the captain what's in them, he's a little less than cooperative. Captain Lanson, what is this stuff, sir? Never mind what it is. Just handle it more carefully, that's all. It's not explosive, is it, sir? I said never mind what it is. Just handle it more carefully and keep it dry. Okay, so it's explosive. The captain then learns that there's a hurricane warning and gets the first officer with the Kendall haircut here to ask the passengers if they want to turn back. But surprisingly, all of them decide to keep going. Don't you realize what I've been saying? You must be mad. A lot of you. You're all bloody mad. 
Ah, don't worry about him. He's just mad because he was sculpted without any genitalia. After that, the captain decides to tell the first officer just what exactly is in those containers. One drop of water. Touch it. I see. And you're transporting this by boat. Why? Anyway. Peters finds creepy mustache guy in her room, and we learn that she's stolen millions of dollars in bonds and he's been hired to get them back. However, Peters gives him a counteroffer. There could be a bonus. A bonus? Of what sort? Yeah, nice try, but we all know you were born a man. So after that scene with Fro Man Chew here, the ship springs a leak and begins taking on water. And right in the room with the explosive containers too. How convenient. The crew doesn't like the idea of getting blown up very much, so they decide to mutiny. With those broken plates and that bloody hurricane coming, we haven't got a dog's chance. No, yeah, we haven't seen right. dog's chance. I've found it. Bosun and me. But all of us yeah. uh -huh. have decided that we should abandon ship. Before that stuff you brought aboard blows us all to hell and back. Well, that's yeah, that's a good idea. Well, we totally haven't got a that. chance, see? Well, you realize this is mutiny, I suppose. You ain't gonna listen to me. And what's more, if any one of you so much as lays a finger on the lifeboat, I'll kill him. Hey, way to keep your crew under control, Captain. Wait a minute, show that again. This guy clearly gets hit on the back, so why does he have a gash across his head? Eh, never mind. I have a feeling this movie's gonna get worse before it gets better. Most of the crew try to escape on a lifeboat, but the captain tries to get them to listen to reason. By trying to kill them all. Oh, ouch. It's an occupational hazard. Eh, if you say so, buddy. So with most of the crew gone, the captain gets the passengers to move the explosive containers to a dry part of the ship. And it looks like they actually succeed. It's a flooded forehold. Hurricane about to hit. Only that door between us. All right, everybody. I'm going to abandon the ship. Well, that was pointless. So, everybody gets into a lifeboat and abandons ship. <laughs> I'll bet the captain feels bad for shooting at the crew and killing that guy for doing the same fucking thing. They spend a few days drifting on the ocean, but eventually they run low on rations and tensions start to mount. I'm not sure I shouldn't leap to the defense of the lady. What's it to be, Captain? Whiskers or cutlish, it says. You're drunk. <laughs> Sorry, mon capitaine. I couldn't resist it. Wait a minute, how did he drink that without anybody on board noticing? What, does that lifeboat have a basement or something? He gets into a fight with Unity's father and they both end up overboard. When suddenly... So Unity's dad gets eaten, I think, they don't really show it. Now, at this point you may be wondering, when do they get to the freaking Lost Continent? Well, the answer to that is, 47 minutes in, or about halfway through the movie. And on top of that, it's not even really a continent, it's just a bunch of seaweed in the middle of the ocean. So in a movie called The Lost Continent, we don't actually get to the Lost Continent until the movie's half over, and it's not actually a continent. That is flagrant false advertising, movie. But it turns out this is no ordinary seaweed, as it apparently has a mind of its own and attacks the captain. Uh, guys? Help him! Help him! You were right, sir. Oh gee, thanks. I'd shake your hand, but right now mine's covered in blood. But as luck would have it, they run into the ship, which is drifted to their exact location with the bartender still alive on board. Wow! That's convenient! Unfortunately, they learn the seaweed has jammed up the propellers and the ship can only drift inside it. But hey, that doesn't stop some people from looking on the bright side. 
Miss Webster, I don't know how to say this, but... Please don't. But he was your father. It's just a series of accidents, nothing more. Yeah, if by accident you mean him pushing your father overboard so he gets eaten by a shark. Meanwhile, creepy mustache face pays Peters another visit. I thought on what we talked about. And I agree. To what? 50% of what you've got in there. And I'll say I never found you. And the bonus. What bonus? Oh, God, I don't even want to think about these two having sex. Moving on. Unity keeps trying to put the moves on Tyler, but he spurns her advances. I'm beginning to feel like a man for the first time in years. Well, you're certainly not acting like one. Oh, there must be one somewhere on this boat. Having a little trouble, sir? No, not really, Pat. It's just that Miss Webster wants a stronger hand than I'm capable of giving her. You'll pardon me saying so, sir. That's not what she wants at all. Moving on! Ah! Ooh, thank you, weird rubber octopus monster. So, yeah, the crawling eye here breaks up Unity's fun and kills Mustache Guy. Oh, and you better get used to the quality of the special effects, because believe me, they do not get any better from here on. The next day, the crew find themselves in a sort of ship graveyard filled with boats from across history that have been trapped by the seaweed. They also notice something in the distance. Help me! It's a girl, being chased by a bunch of weirdos who walk across the seaweed using helium balloons and snowshoes. Okay, so let's recap. The movie has now taken us into a mass of killer seaweed that's filled with giant monsters and balloon pirates. What exactly was the mindset of the people who made this? Now we go where the weed takes us. That would explain a lot. The crew manages to fight the balloon guys off and take one of them hostage. But it turns out these are no ordinary balloon pirates, oh no. They're actually descendants of Spanish conquistadors who drifted into the seaweed from the time of the Spanish Inquisition. Jeez, I knew this was a weird movie, but I wasn't expecting the Spanish Inquisition. Inquisition. In view of your failure to capture the newcomers and to bring us fresh supplies, I sought enlightenment as to what should happen to you. But Master... Silence! Am I not El Supremo, the direct descendant of Jose Quintero? And was not Jose Quintero the Almighty's right hand? Do I not spout endless bits of exposition for the sake of the audience? And why do I have an English accent if I'm supposed to be Spanish? It makes no bloody sense. Do not falter. Issue the punishment. <laughs> what are you going to do? Make him sit in the comfy chair? The comfy chair? And God says that for your failure, you must pay with your life. No! <laughs> Whoa. Is Boba Fett down there, too? <laughs> Meanwhile, back on the ship, the crew decides to interrogate their prisoner. El Supremo is stronger than all. All of you will soon know the iron hand of El Supremo. Don't you? Okay, pick an accent, buddy. Come on. So after they tie up Mr. Brit Spaniolish here, Sarah leaves unexpectedly, and a few of the crew decide to use the captured balloon things to go after her. You know, I always wondered, why doesn't the seaweed attack them when they're walking across it? We see that it can move like it has a mind of its own, and later it even crawls up the side of the ship. Do the snowshoes really offer that much protection? <sighs> you know what, I'm putting way too much thought into this. Let's just keep going. They find Sarah, but since they can't get back to the ship because of the fog, they decide to rest on an island. You want me to uh, go up a canoe, and then we can all paddle our way back to the creek Please tell me he dies. Oh yeah, remember what I said about the effects not getting any better? In addition to crab cakes here, there's also a giant wind-up toy scorpion that attacks the group too. Uh, okay, 
I guess that means it's dead. They end up getting captured by the Spaniards, who fire off a flare to find their way back to the ship, I guess. But the others see it too and demand to know what it means. Well, it means you can say goodbye to your friends. And what else? <laughs> Oh, let's see that again. Damn, you do not fuck with the captain. So the captain finds out where the others have been taken and mounts a rescue. We're getting out. Now we can go noisily or quietly. The choice is up to you. Where are you going? A trap here like the rest of us. There's no escape. How do you know? Have you ever tried? It's God's will. It's your will because you want it this way. You speak bravely of escaping. How are you going to do it? I don't know. We'll try. We'll fail. Then we'll go on trying, and the day we stop trying, we stop living. Anyone who wants to try with us is welcome. You're no longer masters of your own destiny. Join us. I'd rather chance the weed and die. And die. Look out! Whoa, that was close. Wait! I'm coming with you! Well, that was quick. Earlier, the kid sent a man to a horrible death, and he even seemed to enjoy it. But hey, I guess a couple sentences is all it takes to turn him into a good kid. Ah well, it doesn't matter, the kid gets a knife in the back anyway. So the Spaniard's boat gets set on fire, the crew escapes, the Inquisitor is revealed to be... Edgar Winter or something, and they find out the explosive powder can burn the weed too. Feel free to make your own marijuana joke here. And that takes us back to the beginning, which is actually the end. Roll credits. So, what do I think of this movie? Well, there's a lot of Hammer movies that I enjoy, but this one's kind of sluggish. The movie's kind of fun in a cheesy sort of way once they get to the seaweed, but it takes them for fucking ever to get there. Get to the Lost Continent already! But despite all this, there is a secret to enjoying this movie. Now we go where the weed takes us. Amen to that. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. I don't think that's very funny. <laughs>